you've got to devote time to the sport. You you get out of the sport what you put into it. That bird, the more time you spend with the bird, uh, generally the more that bird is going to respond to you. Uh, the more time you spend hunting the bird, the more successful the bird is going to be. Uh, people don't realize that these birds are athletes and uh, they have to be in shape or they get very frustrated. You get frustrated trying to watch them catch game. There's a very narrow margin between catching something and missing something. Nature is designed that way. Only the best can survive out there catching the prey. But I would say how it's affected me family-wise is that uh, basically, uh, like I say, it does take a time away from the family sometimes because I, I, you know, I feel like I need to get up at, you know, like uh, four o'clock from the football game on Sunday afternoon and go out in the woods and fly the bird where I might still have my wife or family sitting around here and so forth. But they understand it's part of the life that I, you know, I, I like to do it on a regular basis. And two, I've kind of uh, limited my professional life back when I was working as an administrator with the state and that there were promotions that I didn't take. Uh, there were transfers that I possibly could have sought, things like that, that basically uh, you don't, you can't practice falconry in the middle of a big city. You've got to be in a place where you can get there after work a couple of times a week or live, you know, live close by. And so there are some limitations that you face if you're going to practice falconry. And I've, I've just, uh, I've, I've, I've accepted that. When he said he wanted to become a falcon, I was like, "What?" <laughs> I, I, you know, because I love my squirrels, and I, I'm not big on hunting, and I was just like, "No way, no way," and I voiced my opinion. He said, "Let's just check it out. Let's check it." So went online and did all the research, and he said, "Let's try it." I said, "Okay," and then I, we met Richard, his master falcon, and his wife, his name's Charlotte, like me. And we started the whole process, and then I started getting involved. And then when the bird came in the living room for two weeks, part of our home, and I, I was just as hooked as hey. When I, we heard the first hunt, I was kind of, oh, I don't think I could handle this. But it's not as easy as you think. We went out many times, and she didn't get anything. And, you know, so you're walking through the woods and you're beating the trees and squirrels are pretty smart, but every <laughs> once in a while, you know, but it was, and then I said, okay, that's an art. It's because I thought she was just going to be able to get everything she got and it was going to be like a mutation, <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, I don't think I can handle that. And then you saw how she ate, you know, and she ate everything. It, it was, it was the perfect full cycle of life in my book and for not being a hunter or any of that. I was all for it then, and now I love it. Now, they're not pets. They're what I call hunting book you know, partners. And when I'm training them, I don't train them to, to hunt. They already know how to do that. They accept uh, my presence allows me to come along and help find for you for them, and I get to watch happens in the wild. But uh, I, I've had someone down on me, something they caught, and a bigger bird comes in there and killed them before I could get in there. So it's, uh, next season I just trap another bird and then start all over. <laughs> but a lot of my birds I've had, you know, 15, 17 years. Uh, sometimes they've died of a natural cause and others have had, you know, accidents. Falconry is going on all around us. If we weren't doing it, the wild birds would still be doing it themselves. And as I say, every, you know, every other day or so, they need to, to find something and eat it, you know? So you're just basically mirroring, it's a mirror image of nature. And some people don't like the fact that nature's that way, but it's designed, you know, the prey-predator relationship. Uh, if you think about it, the prey animals, they don't have hospitals, they don't have old folks' homes. So the, the predators, the raptors, are there to, and it's really more humane to, to catch the weak, the old, the, the sick, 
and dispose of them than this poor animal being suffering, you know? Yeah. So you got to look at it that way. It's kind of like nature's doctor, you know? They don't have doctors, hospitals, and, uh, and or you know, nursing homes. I see.